Sundar Nursery, formerly called Ajim Bagh, is a 16th century heritage park complex adjacent to Humayu's tomb, a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Delhi. It is spread over 90 acres. During the British Raj, the nursery was established to grow experimental plants. It also has a lake which gave it its current designation as a nursery. After renovations starting in 2007, the nursery reopened to public as a heritage park in 2018. I will take you a tour with Raftar team and Dr. Sonali Bali. Um, talking about the uh, heritage walk chapter, um, thanks to uh, Dr. Sonali who, 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 who uh, kind of uh, raised her hand up for this. To Sonali and I'll be your walk leader for today. So we begin a walk from here and uh, we know that this place is Sundar Nursery amidst the pollution and the crowd. We have this first arboretum, the Sundar Nursery in Delhi. So it's also called as the Azim Bagh or the Great Garden. And uh, this has six heritage monuments. We shall not be covering all the monuments. Lakes, a lot of beautiful trees, species of birds, uh, butterflies. Let's see how much we can cover today. And uh, this was the interesting part is that this was all in wilderness. And this was um, uh, this was restored by Aga Khan uh, Trust for Culture and in 2018 it was open to public and as I mentioned in the group it is mentioned it was mentioned as one of the world's greatest places in 2018 in the Time magazine. Uh, in the 20th century the Britishers used this place to experiment and propagate the trees that they brought from different countries, particularly Australia and South, Amer <laughs> South Africa. So they would bring the trees, plant them over here and see whether they could adapt to the Delhi climate. So just to give you an overview of the uh, place, this is a map of Sundar Nursery. I can tell you what all we will be able to cover today. So we will go towards the nursery. We would not, uh, we would not cover the entire nursery, but I would just give you an overview of the nursery. Maybe we can talk about one or two trees over there, and then we go back. We go straight towards the Sundar Burj. This is a, this is a 16th century uh, tomb, and from there we go to the Garden of Delight, and then we make a left turn towards the Lakhanwala Burj. That is another tomb. We go back. Look at the lakes and the water 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 bodies. Then we go in the end towards the Azimgar Sarai. Come back, take a right turn. We go to the area where there are, you know, where there is a, there is a bug hotel, the one that I posted in the group, and there is a place for beekeeping. And then we come back and see the lotus pond at the end of walk over there. So there are about five or six important structures that we need to see today. Sabko malum hai monkeys humare ancestors. So monkeys developed color vision, and uh, because they were supposed to differentiate between the raw fruit and the ripe fruit. So jo unripe fruit from the ripe fruit, and so our color vision is, you know, we have inherited our color vision from the monkeys. So we have to thank the fig tree for our color vision around the banyan tree and there were gopis around and when the christian god was not there he was busy then the gopis would miss him so they would go and hug the tree and think that he is christian bhagwanji okay and then there is another interesting story about satyavan and satyavati have has anybody heard about satyavan and satyavati Sati was a princess uh, she lost her husband satyavan who died under the banyan tree so she got into an argument with the young god, the god of death. Ki bhai, mujhe mera husband wapis chahiye. So she worshipped and worshipped under the banyan tree. And ultimately she got her husband back. So in certain states in India, in the month of Jeshth, that is I think May to June, and there is Jeshth Purnima. So women worship around the banyan tree for long life of their husband. And they recite the um, the but uh, Savitri. But is a corrupted form of what? What means the banyan tree? And they worship the banyan tree for long life of their husband. I visited a, a beautiful uh, um, bargad or the banyan tree in in Chennai. It is in the Theosophical Society. It is around um, 450 years old and it, it spreads over 500 meters square. And the largest in the world 
is in Anagpur district in Andhra Pradesh that spreads over 10,000 meters square. So, जो इतना सा इसका दिख रहा है ये ऐसे बड़ा 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 होता रहता है because of the crop roots and ultimately you would not be able to make out which is the main trunk. बिकॉज इट ग्रोज ऑन अनादर ट्री जो बीच वाला ट्री है वो डाई आउट हो जाता है एक हॉलो क्रिएट हो जाता है एंड दैट इज़ लाइक अ वेरी नाइस स्पेस फॉर यू नो स्मॉलर एनिमल्स लाइक जेकार्स एंड ऑल यू कैन गो एंड मेक द हाउस ओवर दर सो दिस इज अबाउट दी बैनियन ट्री दैट्स वन ऑफ दी हेरिटेज टूम्स ओवर हियर इट्स इन देंटर ऑफ सुंदर This is the champa tree. He's got it. Come. Tell everybody Plank what's the scientific name? Planky pan. Planky pan. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> Very nice. Acha. Champa tree is also called the temple tree because it is grown in Buddhist in the compound of Buddhist and Hindu temples. <laughs> Then the flower is offered to the god, and it is also called the tree of immortality because I read I do not know how much of it is true. that even when it is uprooted the leaves and the flowers keep growing i don't know whether that's true but that's what is written in every text it was the native tree of central america and it was brought to india and um, now lord brahma has given a boon has given uh, you know has uh, said that those who plant two champa trees in their house they will go to heaven so it's so easy to go to heaven <laughs> yeah you just need to plant champa tree in your house okay in hawaii females who wear champa flower on their right ear it means that they are single and you know they're ready to mingle it has got a beautiful fragrance at especially at night hmm otherwise huh? monument a heritage monument it looks uh, rather plain from outside but if you look at the designs you have these arches this is a true arch we'll talk in a while what is a true arch and what is a false arch you can see the beautiful jali work over here and you can see two medallions on which there is quran the quranic verses are there in a calligraphy so uh, it's rather plain from outside and there's a parapet on the top with a kangura design pattern and there is a dome it's a true dome so i'll talk about what is a true arch and what is a true dome so let's go inside it's it's quite beautiful inside so this is incised plaster work <coughs> monuments from 13th to 16th century had incised plaster work what is incised plaster so they would this was of course restored by the aga khan trust for culture what is incised plaster there is a coating of plaster which is thick and coarse over which there is another layer of plaster this is all plaster okay so uh, on the second layer which is wet carvings are made and it is also painted when it is wet and when it sets then it it forms the patka design okay so this is all incised plaster work if you look at the decorations we have the what all do we have we have jali work we have some geometrical designs we have calligraphic the quranic verses in the uh, the, the, uh, the calligraphic work okay we have some pattern which means languages okay we have some pattern which means languages there is a star studded ceiling ab ye hai kya jagah this is actually a tomb what is a tomb a dead body is a dead body for someone which was there Okay, okay. Okay, so where the dead bodies? You know what? Which is a tomb? Come, every everybody should come here. All bachus should come here. So you know what is a tomb? So a place where the bodies are buried. Like in Hindus, we burn the bodies after we cremate. We burn the bodies. In some religion, they bury the body underground, right? So in Islam, you need to bury the body under the sky. लेकिन जो नोबल्स होते थे एम्पर्स होते थे अब उनको तो एम्पर्स थे उनको तो यू नो एक अच्छा स्ट्रक्चर चाहिए था कि सब लोग उनको याद करें तो वो एक आर्टिफिशियल स्काई क्रिएट करते थे कैसे अपने टूम में ऊपर स्टार स्टडेड रूफ बना के सो दिस इज अ स्टार स्टडेड रूफ जस्ट टू गिव एन इम्प्रेशन दैट दे आर वेरिड अंडर द स्का
तुम क्लास के होशियार बच्चों का फोटो खिंचा रहे In Delhi, that is what is written in the books where you can dedicate a bench to a loved one. So you would see all the most of the benches over here are taken. You would see a template on the bench where, apart from the name of the person who is deceased, the loved ones have also written something in memory of the loved person who has died. So this is the famous bench of Mr. Speedy Singh, and I have put this in the group. Here there is a poem by Pablo Neruda. The bench, Mr. K. D. Singh was a famous bookkeeper who died in 2014. And what is written on the bench? When I close a book, I open life by Pablo Neruda. How do you make food? What's your name first? Ronit. Ronit. Please make food. With oh wow! Leaves make food with chlorophyll. So the green color pigment that you see in the leaves is called chlorophyll. It, in presence of sunlight, chlorophyll, and carbon dioxide, the leaves make glucose. That is the food and release oxygen. So that is why the trees are called as carbon dioxide sequesters. They will take in carbon dioxide from the air. And what is the process called? Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. The, process, the, process, the process of plants making their food. Where plants the leaves se kahan jata hai food? Look at the leaves. There are some veins. If you look at the leaves, leaf carefully, it will have a mid vein. Mid vein and, and mid vein. Yeah, mid vein and the mid vein. Yeah, so it has a mid vein. We can't pluck a leaf if there is a leaf. Oh, yeah, here. So, look at the mid vein and the veins on the leaf. Yes, I can see. Yeah, you can see. All the children can see. Look at the veins. So, after the food is produced, the food goes down to the trunk. There are channels in the trunk through which the food goes down to the roots. And from the roots, the water and minerals will go up to other parts of the tree. So, there are channels inside the tree. Okay, so when you... When the birds and insects and and they they open the tree, no, no. you are able to get water and food from inside. So the food and water keeps flowing up and down. Everybody here, see what is this? This is only a replica. We can't have the original seal over there. But this is a different seal. Yeah. You just put that official seal. Yes, this is a replica of seal from Mohanjadaro, the Indus Valley Civilization. So seal used to be just show made of, seal used to be made of stone. Steer tide, which used to be near. This is only a replica. We can't have the original seal over This particular seal has a people tree. So the first mention of people tree was in the Indus Valley Civilization. So here is a people tree. These are the leaves of people tree. And at the at the base of the people tree, the trunk is our two unicorns. What she is wearing, this is a unicorn. Unicorn is a mythological animal okay so look on that seal also you have a unicorn this is a unicorn what was the need of the seal so it was for commercial purposes to put a stamp like like when we get a letter we have a stamp on the letter so you tell what is rainwater harvesting? Capturing, diversion, and storage of rainwater. So, every drop of rainwater that falls on Sunda Nursery through channels is taken to the lake. It is taken to the wells. There are seven 16th century wells over here which were desilted and if there are two underground storage tanks. So every drop is stored over here. Now why do we need to do rainwater harvesting? When there is no rain uh, we can use yes, that so water. Can, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so that we don't waste water. We are conserving water. It can be used for domestic, industrial, agriculture purposes. So that's the role of lakes and wells and two underground tanks over here.
okay so uh, in 2 years after sundar nursery was opened in 2018 there was an article in february 2020 in hindustan times that stated that the ground water level of sundar nursery really came up so do you know what is ground water okay ground water is a water which trees take by their roots so below the soil there is a layer of rocks which has got both oxygen and water below that is a layer of rocks which has got only oxygen it is uh, it is got only water so in between the rocks there is only water the upper limit of that is called as a ground water that is a saturated layer saturated only with the ground water and the upper limit is called as a ground water ground water varies from places to places for example near the yamuna basin it would be somewhere around 1.56 meters whereas somewhere in the dry arid Ridge region it would be around 64 meters. So on an average, I think on in Delhi the groundwater level is 5 to 10 meters. But after Sundar Nursery was opened and the lakes and wells were filled with water, the level in two years of groundwater rose in this area. What can we do to save water at home? I want every child to give me an answer. What can we do to save water at home? Yes. We can use buckets outside and it's to uh, get some water out of the rain water. Okay, we can use buckets instead of shower so that we don't waste water. Yes, Ronnie. Close the tap when it is closing. Okay, close the tap when you are when you are brushing your teeth or washing the face. Don't keep the tap open. You use the can. Very good. We really use the can. Very nice. Okay, so if we do little little things at home. we can save water and it is important to save water there are many places in india where water is not available in plenty so we need to save water why do we need insects it's a hotel for the insects look at this you know we have made a hotel for the insects so so why why are insects important do you know that pollination do you know what is pollination yeah they uh, take the pollination from the flowers and uh, okay they carry to some other so so one if the plant has to make new plants baby plants it needs to do what is called as pollination where the male flower goes to the female the part from the male flower which is called as a pollen would go can you hold this thank you the part from the male flower it is called as a pollen will go to the female flower and then a seed is born and then from the seed the fruit is born all right so you need birds you need insects because when the insects birds bees beetles okay uh, they they butterflies moths they go to the flower to suck the nectar some of the pollens would stick to their body parts and when they go to another flower they would drop those pollen on the female parts and when the male and the female parts fuse they form the seed or the egg and from that a new plant is born so that is why we need to take care of our insects another role that the insects play is they are food for birds another thing they help in decomposing the dead uh, leaves and the trees which have fallen on the ground so what happens on the ground when the leaf falls down and dies what happens to it it becomes compost okay decompose what helps in decomposition of the tree it it helps the plant to grow better okay so wow. when the plant <laughs> dies when it is on the floor on the ground the fungi you have seen some fungi sprouting over dead leaves dead uh, trees the fungi and then a lot of other insects like beetles earthworm so many insects come to help the fungi and the entire tree the dead tree is broken down and the water is released and then all the minerals of the tree go they go back to the soil they nourish the soil so a part of the tree never dies a part of the tree always lives so decomposition of the dead decaying organic matter is important and that is done by the insects so we have insects have a very role important role to play and that is why we have made hotels for the insects it's called the bug hotel see a bug has in there see bug hotel so why is bee important bee makes honey yes bee yes. makes honey yeah and honey is free from it sugar and cholesterol it is rich in antioxidants we also have two stomachs one stomach is the digestive stomach as we have 
And the other stomach is the honey stomach where they make honey. Oh, is it? I didn't know this. Okay. Okay, so this is the art of culturing the bees and making honey. It's called as apiculture. And do you know bees are as old as dinosaurs? Even before them, the bees were there. So beekeepers manage bees in wooden boxes. They are able to produce honey without harming the bee. What has Sundar Nursery done to take care of the bees? They have given them their own habit. Habit, okay. Habitat. Habitat. Yeah. yeah. So basically, they have planted so many trees and flowers from which the bees can collect nectar. All right, and some bees, all the bees don't live in, live in hives. There are some leaves, the bees which live underground or on the not underground on the ground. They make the nest on the ground. So the, in Sundar Nursery, you're not allowed to pick up dead leaves because this is where the bees live, make the nest. So you also see the bumblebee also and the other other bees as well. The carpenter bee, the sting bee. Of course I know. Oh my God. Stingless bees are blunted, blunted stingers. So on the leaves there is a waxy covering which is called as cuticle, which prevents it repels the water. So you will see on the leaves there is no water. It is clean. It is dry. And as it repels the water, it cleans the leaves, so that enough area is available for photosynthesis. So it has got large floating leaves which can take the sunlight and photosynthesize. The important thing about the lotus and other water plants is that they have air spaces in them which can make them float. Okay, Kambi was a god of love, and his his he would ride a parrot, and he would have a bow which was made up of. Uh, sugar cane, which was stung by bees. Now the arrows had one um, arrow. Each had five arrows. So it's very famous five arrows of Kamde, and each arrow would be tipped with a flower. So one was a lotus flower. The others were mango, Ashoka, then I think I'm not sure jasmine, but water lily, blue water lily. So the tip of the arrow would be would be it would be tipped with a flower. Now. Kamdev was a son of Vishnu and who was the wife of Vishnu? Lakshmi. Okay. So what happened? Yeah. So 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 what was the, the story is that um, uh, Shiva was meditating and Parvati wanted to marry him, but Shiva was not really getting interested in Parvati. But then it was very somebody. I mean, it was known that the son of Shiva and Parvati would be able to kill a Rakshas, a demon. I'm forgetting his name. I think his name was Tarakasura or something like that. Okay. No, 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 not that. All right. So the gods they wanted Parvati and Shiva to get together, but Shiva was paying no attention to Parvati. So the god Indra he summoned Kamdev, the god of love. To come and shoot the arrow on Shiva, so that is he is infused with love for Parvati. Oh wow! Paving the path for future generations. Wow, I love it. Oh, thank you, thank you, Rafta Group. I just Ooh. love it. I do all today for the World Heritage Week. Uh, first of all, before we finish. Before we initiate this walk, uh, let me just tell you a uh, bit, bit about Raftar. Uh, we are a small community and but a thriving one here in Kurgaon. We started as a cycling club and uh, then we eventually got into running, hiking and uh, then now a heritage walk also. Uh, so it's been a uh, quite exciting journey so far. Uh, we were, uh, uh, we just say, we तूफानों में हीरे मोती निकलते हैं तो ऐसे in the in the midst of the second wave of COVID uh, around April 20th uh, we we formed this community and uh, since then uh, we are just trying to do better each day uh, our core mantra is uh, we call it as don't leave anyone behind so that's our motto and that's what drives us each day uh, with me uh, I have uh, Captain AJ so he is one of the biggest motivator for us in the in the group. For, for all our rides and he's, he's one who 
hook, 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 work out all the workout plans for our, for our running group, for our cycling group. So he's the man to look up to. Uh, if you don't know what to do the next day, just uh, open your WhatsApp group and go into the particular chapter, whether it's running or cycling or hiking or yoga, and you'll find a plan. Uh, we have coach Mr. Dav. Uh, he's the biggest inspiration for all of us. Uh, as we speak, he has uh, clogged uh, more than 450 con consecutive century rides. Right? Yeah. He rides every day. So he's uh, one of the most uh, inspiring uh, members for us to look forward. Uh, one of the most uh, uh, senior members, we have Deepak Sir with us. Uh, he, he's one who, 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 uh, who inspired us like. Uh, he, he did a super randonner with a long distance <coughs> cycling, which is a brevet of 200, 300, 400, 600. So he's someone who really inspired all of us, all the, all the, all the youngs, and uh, he, he, we call him as the youngest member of our team. <laughs> Thanks for watching my video. We'll come up with more informative videos. Subscribe my channel and press bell icon. Thank you.